welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. like you have missed God's will for your life? Have your choices taken you down the wrong road? Well, I have good news for you. God is not only the God of a second chance, but a third and a fourth and on and on and on. He doesn't quit. My message today is entitled God's Third Choice. You will find out that God's first choice doesn't always work out, but He doesn't quit neither should you. No matter how far you have strayed from His will for your life, you can always get back on the right track by choosing to turn around now and walk with Him. Let's open our hearts to receive the Word. Heavenly Father, we thank You that Your Holy Spirit is here, present here tonight. Present upon and within each one of us. And so I just ask you, Holy Spirit, to guide and direct this entire message, whatever you want to do, that you speak through me the words that you want these people to hear, your people. And so we open our hearts to you, Holy Spirit, and we open our hearts to the Word of God. Say this with me. I open my spirit spirit. and my mind mind. to the Word of God tonight. I will receive receive what the Word says, says, and I will act upon it. it. Amen. Amen. All right, I want you to turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 3. You know, the bad thing and the good thing, I guess, about being the last speaker is, number one, you've you just heard your entire message preached every time you sat down. And you know why that is? The good news is the reason is that happens is because God has a message for this group of people. And Bonnie said it, and Susan said it, Virginia said it, Cammie said it. I mean, it just all hooks in and ties together. So 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 19. It says, Samuel grew. Now I'm reading out of the Amplified. Samuel grew. The Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. Hallelujah. Now, that might cause you to pause and think a minute. Would you like for none of your words to fall to the ground? Well, you might if you're saying the right thing. But if you're not paying attention to what you're saying, you certainly don't want all of your words to come to pass, do you? Especially when you come in and it's late and, you know, this happened, that happened. The, and, you know, you don't want those words to come to pass. You don't want the words to come into pass when you're discouraged, depressed, and you say things out of anger. You don't want that coming to pass. But it says... Samuel grew, the Lord was with him, and none of his words fell to the ground. What does that mean? That means that when he spoke, the Lord spoke through him, and his speaking was accurate, and it came to pass. That's why none of his words fell to the ground. He was speaking divinely inspired of God. Now, verse, the next verse says, And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord continued to appear in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh in the word of the Lord. Now, Israel has come a ways at this point. You know, You think about when the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea and there there was, you know, a pillar of fire at night, a cloud by day, the Red Sea split. I think God did a pretty good job managing Israel, taking care of them, don't you? 
who ever heard of such a deliverance? And yet, at one point, when Moses is on the mount, the people said, Moses, go back to God and tell God not to do that anymore. Don't talk to us, because when God spoke, it said the earth shook. And the people said, uh, would you talk to God and tell him not to do that anymore? We don't want him talking directly to us. Just tell him to tell you and you can tell us. <laughs> so some, you know, they, they backed off. They backed off from God. God was divinely intervening. God was doing miracles. I've heard people say, oh, if God would just do a miracle, then, then I would know this. I would know, I would have faith. If God would do a miracle... Well, look what the miracles that God did for the Israelites. And look what happened to them. They finally said, oh, just send somebody to take care of that and don't talk to us, God. So they relied on the prophets. Let the prophets talk to us. Let Moses talk to us. Uh, let them talk. Don't, I, we don't want to talk directly to God. So... We'll go to the next spot. Four, uh, 1 Samuel 8. Samuel has ru uh, ruled Israel and been the prophet for quite a long time. It says, verse 1, it says, When Samuel was old, he made his sons judges over Israel. And things went kind of downhill from there. And it says in verse 4, And all the elders of Israel assembled and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Behold, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint us a king to rule over us like all other nations. So now they've rejected the prophet's ministry. Give us a king. We want to be like everybody else. We don't want God being a pillar of fire. We don't want God splitting the Red Sea. We want a king, and we want to do stuff the normal way. Shocking, isn't it? Give us a king. Give us a king. We want a king. The title of my message tonight is God's Third Choice. You thought God always got his first choice, didn't you? Hey, don't we look for everything to be perfect? God's perfect. God does something. I mean, God just, he's got everything, everything he does, just it's just right in line, right in line, right in line. Now, God had a first choice to rule over Israel. He had a first choice. You know who his first choice was? Him. God wanted to be ruler over Israel. God wanted to take care of Israel. God wanted to take care of his people. And so what happened, and I'm not going to read it all to you because you, you, you've probably read it anyway. So what happened is, you know, Samuel's very upset about this. And he goes to God and he says, what are we going to do? And God says, well, explain to them what's going to happen when they get a king. Oh, he's going to take your sons and take them to war. They're going to get killed. They're going to take your daughters. They're going to become bakers and slaves, and this is going to happen. They're going to, they're going to put taxes on you. Anybody ever heard of that? Yeah. We're going to tax you. And they said, well, we don't care. We want a king. So Samuel was very grieved, and he came back, and he said, God, what am I going to do? They, they're not listening to me. And he said, hearken to them and give them a king. Anoint a king. That's God's second choice. Give them what they ask for. You ever thought that you knew what was the best answer to a solution? And you prayed and you prayed and you prayed, okay, God, I'm believing, I've got faith, you do this, I'm believing you're going to do this, this is going to happen. And then it didn't turn out the way that you wanted it to? God, what happened? You thought you knew what the answer was. You th thought you knew what was best. But you know what? God knows what's best. He knew what was best for the children of Israel. He knows what's best for his people. 
So that's why God always speaks the end result. God always speaks the end result. His word does not return void. He speaks the end result. So he's, anyway, he said, okay, give him a king. Let him have a king. So Samuel goes and anoints Saul to be king. God said, that's the one. I'm going to send him to you tomorrow. You'll know who he is. Go anoint him. Samuel did. And how many of you knew what happened with that mess? He was disobedient to God. But didn't God call him? Well, yeah. Did God choose him? Yeah. But he didn't choose God. I heard people say, oh, you know, but many are called, but few are chosen. I'm not called. I'm not the chosen one. God's called everybody. You only become chosen by choosing God. You become the chosen by choosing God. Saul did not choose God. This grieved the prophet Samuel. So he went back to God. And God said, I'm going to send you to anoint my third choice, a man after my own heart. Now, don't you imagine that Samuel was a little bit upset, you know? I mean, God, these people are going to think I'm not really a prophet because I anointed Saul. I anointed Saul. You told me to anoint him. I anointed him, and he made a mess. God said, don't grieve over it. Just move on. Just move on. So he went forward. And now we're on the third choice. And as you know, Samuel went to the house of Jesse, and he said, I want you to bring all your sons in because God told me the king is here. And so they brought them by one at a time. Big strapping guys bring them by. Oh, well, surely this is him because, you know, he looks like a leader. But no, that's not him. That's not him. That's not him. By this time, Samuel's getting really confused. Well, we're at the end, and none of these are the right one. He said, do you have any more children? <laughs> and David wasn't there. He said, well, there's the youngest, and he's out in the pasture with the sheep, and, uh, you know, they weren't too interested in getting him in the house. And Samuel said, go call him, bring him in. And when he came in, it says that he was fair-skinned and had blue eyes. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. This was God's third choice. Now I want you to think about this a minute. Have you ever said, well, I tried God, but I failed? I tried to use my faith, and it didn't happen. I prayed for healing, and I didn't get healed. God, I prayed and asked for my bills to be met, and it didn't happen. So I quit. What does the Word of God say? It's through faith and patience we inherit the promises of God. So Samuel's sitting there, and here comes this guy. Well, why didn't they bring this guy in? You know, I always kind of wondered that. And you know, you hear this stuff, you read it in there, where his brothers are saying, oh, what, who, who did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? What are you doing here? They were mean to him. Why were they mean to him? We always think that God's going to anoint and call people who are perfect who have it all together, that know the Word, walk in the Word, they do everything right. We always think certain things about that. But you know what? The Word of God tells us that God uses the things that are lowly, base, that everybody thinks God can't use that person. 
So I'm sitting here looking at you today and I'm hearing lots of thoughts that pass through your head. God can't use me because I fill in the blank. God can't use me or I can't go out and lay hands on somebody. I can't do that because. You know, Saul's problem was he thought he could do, well, I'm king now. I can do whatever. If I need to change the sacrifices, I'll change them. But the one who says, I can't, I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I, I don't know. Guess what? It's not you doing it. See, that's the whole thing. It's not you doing it. And this is what David realized. That's why his heart was after God, because he trusted God to do it. What pleased God with Abraham's life? He trusted and believed in whatever God said. He just believed it. He believed, just simply believed it. So back to David. The youngest comes in. God says, I've anointed him. I want you to know, you know, he didn't, David didn't get invited to the meals. I did some research on it because I really was wondering about that. What, 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 what's that all about? Well, we can't really prove it in particular, but if you go on and you Google it and you really research it, David was illegitimate. He was not included in the meals. He was like a servant, a slave. He was uh, treated as though he really wasn't part of the family. And yet God anointed him. God called him to be king. God said, David is a man after my own heart. What made the difference? It wasn't prestige. It wasn't family. It wasn't how good he was, how perfect he was, how he did things. It was the fact that he said, I can't do it, God, but you can. Through me, God anointed me and I slew a lion and a bear when it came after my flock. God threw me. God threw me. Read the Psalms, the greatest, the greatest psalmist, David. What a difference. What a difference. Back to God's third choice. David was God's third choice. God is still trying. You may say, oh, I've prayed and prayed and prayed and it hasn't happened. I've got news for you. Just keep going because it's coming. The only way it doesn't come is if you quit. If you quit. I was on a television program recently and they asked me, <laughs> at my book out there, Reverse the Curse in Your Body and Emotions, and they're talking about healing, talking about things like that. And they just looked at me and they said, the funny thing about it was everybody on that program was sick. They were sitting there and I had to cut the cameras off of them because they were blowing their nose and, and they were sick. And, and um, I was sitting there going, thank you, Lord, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. No weapon formed against me will prosper. And he said, well, you know, I was looking at your book here. Don't you ever get sick? It's like, because I wrote a book, I don't ever have an opportunity to have an illness or something, you know? This is, this is the thinking. No. You learn to use the Word of God wherever you are. You start there. And it's a whole lot better if you start believing and using the word for a cold or an allergy than it is cancer. The word will work no matter what. But if you start where you are and keep yourself healthy, it's a lot easier to believe God to live in health. And by the way, did you know that healing is not God's highest and best? Health is. Living in health is. Staying healthy. Anyway, I answered this girl and I said, well, sure, I have multiple opportunities, but it's usually when I don't take care of myself. This body's the temple of the Holy Ghost and I don't give it rest and whatever. You know, certainly I have opportunities. But I know from what the Lord said to me that there are people sitting here and you, you've been discouraged 
about some things because you know you've you've been taught the word and and you've put the word to work and yet time frame the time frame between when you planted the seed and when you reap the harvest has grown long you've become weary and discouraged I've got good news for you. It's coming. Don't quit. Plant more seeds. Plant more seeds of the Word of God. Now think about this for just a minute. I've met a lot of people who judge themselves based on where their faith is. Well, I don't have that much faith. I should have more faith. I know I should have more faith. This is the way the enemy gets you in a little tailspin is to keep you looking in here about all the mistakes you've made, how you haven't done everything right. I heard Brother Copeland preach that he did this and I don't do that. I should do it. I've heard so-and-so preach. I should do this and I don't do it. So I'm missing it there. I made a mistake. I did this, I did that, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. Guess what? God's not accusing you. Jesus is not accusing you. Nobody is condemning you except the enemy who is the accuser of the brethren. In your own mind. You know what Jesus said in John chapter 5? He was, uh, he was talking to the religious leaders of the day. And he said... He was, he was really letting them have it. And they, they were getting quite upset with him. And he said, do not think that I am accusing you to the Father. Do not think that I'm accusing you to the Father. The one who is accusing you is Moses, whom you say you believe. I read that, and I looked just like you did, huh? What? Moses is accusing you. And then all of a sudden I got it. I looked at that and I saw what Jesus was saying. They were trying to adhere to the, to the law, the laws of Moses, which they held up as their standard. And what he was saying is your own conscience is accusing you. You're accusing yourself. Whatever beliefs you have developed that are outside the Word of God will accuse you. If you're being accused, your beliefs are outside the Word of God because God does not accuse you. God does not condemn you. Jesus is not condemning you. I don't care what you're doing or have done. Jesus is not condemning you. He is there to help you, to deliver you, to get you out of it. Yeah, but he's already given me a second chance. Well, guess what? He's got a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance. Six, seven, to infinity. But you don't understand where you are. I don't have to understand where you are. I know what the Word of God tells me. The Word of God tells me that God's Word will not return a void. They say, I've tried to quit smoking for 40 years. Well, keep trying and keep putting the word on it. Keep putting the word of God on it. God's word will not return void, but it will accomplish where he sends it. Isn't it wonderful to know that God's word will not return void in your life? His perfect plan for your life will not be defeated if you use your power of choice and choose to believe His Word. Well, the offer today is a single audio CD of this complete message on God's third choice. Now, this has been a two-part series on our Concepts of Faith television program, and this CD contains the full teaching from both programs. Along with this CD, I will include a book written by my father, Charles Capps. It's called The Light of Life in the Spirit of Man. This is offered $25.17, $15 plus shipping and handling. 
call 877-396-9400 or go to caps.tv. Now some of the chapter titles in this book that I'm offering are filled with the wisdom of God. God wants to light your candle. He wants to enlighten you. God wants to reveal mysteries to you. Words create images. Walking in the light and the mind of Christ. And one of my favorite uh, uh, paragraphs of this particular book, it says, the word affects your total being. It will cause you to make correct decisions and not know why you make them. It will bring healing to your physical body. The entrance of God's word gives life and light. That's offered twenty-five seventeen, fifteen dollars plus shipping and handling, as a CD and a book. And in addition to that, I want to send you this free pamphlet that I have written. It is entitled "This Time Tomorrow." You know. The city of Samaria was surrounded and in a time of severe famine and desperation, surrounded by the king of Syria, and he was literally starving them out. But the word of the Lord came and declared the impossible, and the word said, this time tomorrow there will be plenty of food in abundance. This time tomorrow starvation will cease and commerce will resume. Hey, don't give up hope. Or let go of God's word in your life. In a moment, in an hour, in a day, circumstances can and will change if you put your faith in God's word. All right, this package is offered twenty-five seventeen. It's a book, CD, and pamphlet. Fifteen dollars plus shipping and handling. Thank you for joining us today for the concepts of faith. God bless you. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.